everyone. Afternoon, Good morning. Evening. Afternoon. It for it's morning for our central alphas and our Pacific alphas. Mm -hmm. It is noon for our Eastern alphas. Good morning, afternoon, everyone. Let us know in the chat if you're super duper excited. Today, we have a very special guest, and this guest is actually the very first of our series that we do right before Handmade Alpha Academy opens. Um, I, I say that like we've done it a million times, but we've only had two enrollment periods. So our last enrollment period, we did this and you guys loved it so much that we're doing it again. For the next four weeks, we are going to have Handmade Alpha Academy graduates come in and talk about cool secrets and tricks that they have learned in their selling journeys. And today we have Andrea. You want to say hi, Andrea? Hi, everybody. Andrea, what's your shop name? That way they can check it out. And guys, it is in the in the video description if you want to like go click and look. But what's your shop name? It's called Emmy Bell Studio. And what do you make? I make baby blankets and swaddle sets. Lots of different stuff for babies. Perfect. And guys, if you want to see an example of an, a shop that has some of the best photos I've ever seen, some of the most amazing branding that I've ever seen, go down, click that link. There's also um, all of Andrea's social media accounts. And the one that stood out the most to me We've got about 10 minutes before we, we stream, guys. We, we hang out for the first 10 minutes of every video. So I, just so everybody knows. But Andrea, TikTok, that's a really weird um, a really weird app for a business owner. What do you use TikTok for? I just started it. And I'm not entirely sure. But I've had a lot of fun doing time-lapse videos of me working, um, some stuff with my kids in it. I was just having fun. I haven't done any of the woes or anything like that. I'm not that cool. I guess that's a big <laughs> trend on there. And I didn't even know what it was until I, you get kind of sucked in and I didn't know what it was until I was scrolling through. I was like, why is everyone doing this weird motion? Um, I, I don't know if I'll get that trendy, but I'm having fun just making short teeny tiny videos with it. That's great though. And you know, I always said with um, Snapchat, because I use Snapchat for you know, my business for a long time. And it's almost like nobody's doing it. And because of that, it's very powerful because you have got a lot of authority on a platform that's very populated, but there's not a lot of businesses who think to use it because they're like, oh, you know, that's just for kids. That's for kids doing little lip, lip sync videos, you know? Right. So it's, it's like a cool platform that you can pioneer. Oh, and you've got some fans who say that your uh, room is very pretty. Thank you. I cleaned it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> always, it's usually not quite so pretty. It's usually a big mess. <laughs> it looks so good, though. It does. It looks nice. We, you know what we do is we just kick all the trash to the side. There's, like, mountains. Great idea. Yeah. The borders where there's, like, you have it's to. Not a, it's not that bad. You got to swim. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what it looks like <laughs> off camera. We have a snow shovel where we just shovel it all before we stream live. <laughs> okay, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Someone said they like my hair back. <coughs> Who likes my hair back? Stephanie Jones. Thanks, Stephanie. I like it back too. She hardly ever puts it back like that. You know why I did it? Because uh, I messaged Andrea um, the second I was supposed to actually send her the stream link. And I uh, told her that I would send it to her in 10 more minutes. And I finished my makeup and got dressed and didn't have time to do my hair. So here it is. <laughs> we were we were running behind today. So, guys, I wanted to go ahead and quickly shout out while we've got about five minutes. Last Friday, we did an amazing three hour live string stream string live string. It was just a string, guys. We stood there. We had a string. It was great. We did string cheese. We did we did. I'm running out of string ideas. But anyway, we did a three hour live stream. Are you okay? I'm yeah, good. I'm good. We did a three hour live stream for suicide prevention. We uh, raised 1000 We have raised $1,030. If you guys have not watched that live stream, it was hilarious. We did skits. We ate nasty stuff. We got our um, business partner, Nate, to eat some fish sauce and almost throw up. Mark had a big spoonful of mustard. It was great, guys. 30, 30, 33 hours. And Renee Christine was there, and Paula Haas was there, and Anthony Wolf was there, 
And it was a lot of fun. So be sure to go watch that. You know, it's nothing educational. You're probably not going to learn anything other than, you know, how well we can take really nasty food. But okay. be sure to go watch that. And as I promised during so that. You're probably not going to learn anything other than, you know, how well we can take really nasty food. Did you do that for? I didn't mean to. I meant to get this link. I was like, "Who's talking?" And Who as, is that? as promised in the in the live stream last Friday, we will be making our donation today. We extended out our time for one week in the description or in the um not in the description in, in the, the chat. in the chat. I'm a mess today, guys. Yeah. I am. I am a mess. In the chat, I put the link. We are up to $1,030. If you guys would like to donate, be sure to go to that link, even if it's just $5. $5 is basically how we got to that point. Just, yep. you know, one or two people here and, and there. We don't, and we don't see that money. GoFundMe immediately puts it to the charity themselves. We don't actually put our hands on that at all. Right. And another cool thing that we have decided to do is we are going to be donating our monetization for the month because our monetization for that video got pulled. Um, and I can't say why, because this video will get pulled and it wasn't even anything bad. It was something silly, but politics politics so because of that we are going to be donating our monetization for this channel for the entire month which means if you decide to binge on a bunch of our videos and you don't skip the ads um you know more this money. this month yeah that means that we will have more to donate and usually our monetization is only around like two hundred dollars which is basically what we use to cover our tech just for our youtube yeah so, but well, we're going to be donating that um, at the end of the month and we'll let you know what that number is closer to time. So if you've got friends who are into Etsy and you would like to share our channel with them, if you just want to binge watch a bunch of our videos, if you've missed some videos, watch them, don't skip the ads and we'll have more to donate. So uh, guys, we're going to be starting in about two minutes. Let's see who's here. Nicholas, he was there during the live stream. Melissa D. Broadwin was here. She was during, she went to the, the live stream too, I'm pretty sure. Shay, um, let's see, Rebecca. Shay said, seriously, y'all got demonetized. If it's for the re reason I'm thinking, then that's ridiculous. It's about pew pew things. Pew pew things. And we were only talking about the difference between pew pew things in, uh, in, Australia versus rules for pew pew things in the U.S. because Anthony Wolf was there. That's we the only thing in the video that could have demonetized it. Yeah. There was, she watched through it like two or three times. I did. It was so funny. There's, I, there's nothing else in there. Uh, does someone actually report you to get it pulled? No. no. It's, AI. It's, an, it's an algorithm. And we requested manual review and they denied it. So, yeah. All right, guys. We've got about one minute. Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and dive in, though. Um, because I, I think that you guys have sat enough and I don't really have a lot of news other than that Handmade Alpha Academy opens on June 14th and the link to get on the waiting list is down below. You will still get a all the same goodies um, and notifications and announcements and yada yada if you're on my email list, but the waiting list will give you like one extra. You'll get one early email basically, okay? So join that if you would like to, but you will not get double subscribed to our list. All right. So speaking of Handmade Alpha Academy, guys, Andrea is here from Andrea. What is your business name and what do you sell one more time? <laughs> um, Emmy Bell Studio and I sell baby blankets and items for babies. Perfect. And what what made you what made you get into baby blankets? I know that you were talking to us previously about a shop that you had before. So let's dive into that a little bit because I want to know more about the first shop. The first shop um, I started right after my daughter. My first daughter was born, and I was so frustrated with how there was so many boring baby blankets that all looked the same, and it was pink or blue, and that's all you had, and or green if you were not finding out and they were just boring patterns. So I wanted to do something a little different. Um, I wanted something prettier. My mom sews as well. And she taught me how to sew and she encouraged me to try it. I'm like, all right, I'll just, um, I'll make some for my kid and I'll see if other people like them too. And they, they did, but it was, you know, first shop, a lot of uh, a really steep learning curve. So I ended up closing that one down shortly after I started it. <laughs> Did you make any sales in, in that first shop or was it just kind of like a trial shop? 
I, I did. I made probably 10 to 15 sales in the time it was open. And this is back in like 2011, long time ago. Um, and I just, you know, life happens, you get busy, it's hard when you have a baby. And I was just like, this just isn't my priority right now. And if this is too hard, and I, this isn't for me right now, but I didn't totally close the door to it, obviously, because I started my new shop um, in 2017 after my second daughter was born <laughs> and I felt the same way. <laughs> and how do you think you've done um, so far? Because I know you basically just opened this new shop. I think that most of us would agree that 2017 is still a baby shop and you've had amazing results. So what was that transition like? Like going from, you know, getting those like little, you know, 13 to 15 sales from the first shop to having like a relatively awesome, amazing, beautifully branded, successful shop. It was great. It was life-changing. <laughs> um, I was a dental hygienist. I guess that technically I still am, but I don't work as a hygienist anymore. I just do my shop now. Um, so the difference between the two was what I wanted that first shop to be. I, I really wanted it to be successful and it sucked not being successful in it, but to learn from the mistakes I made in that shop and cut ahead six years and do it again, do it a better way. Um, felt great. It was wonderful. I loved it. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. So we, we're not going to be like during these student interviews, guys, I'm not using these as like a way to market HA, but I do want our students to have the opportunity just to kind of weigh in and talk about, you know, what, really happened when they joined and how it transitioned. But I just want to like throw out that disclaimer that, you know, it's not going to be a bulk of the content because no. Andrea has some really exciting stuff to, for us to share. But I do want to ask, you joined HAA in December? Were you a December alpha? I was, I was in the first group. Okay. You were, you were in the, the last year. So you're coming on a full year. Yes. How long did it take you to complete HAA? I don't, I don't, have we ever talked like one-on-one -on -one before? I don't think we have. No, just in the chats. Right. Um, no, but, we haven't, not one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> this is awesome. So so how long did it take you to, to complete it? Well, hard to remember. I dove in head first when I first got in there. And probably within a month, I had gone through everything. But my I had already started my business. So right. I didn't have to do... A lot of the background stuff, all right. of the tedious dot your eyes, cross your T's stuff. I didn't have to do a lot of that, but um, I still go into it and reference it all the time. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, what what was what was the business like? We'll just say like before you joined HAA versus we'll say today. Like how how do you feel that not not just in sales but you as a business owner and your branding and um, like the way that you strategize, we won't talk about the, ex you know, exact HA strategies, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. How do you feel, how do you feel that the, that you differ now from when you first started? Uh, when I first started, I spent a lot of time on YouTube watching your videos and also Renee too. That's how I found you was through Renee. And I, I just, spent <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> um, but I spent a lot of time just like uh, soaking up everything that you had that was the free content. So I did my best with that. So I felt like my shop was pretty good. I mean, I was, I wasn't doing, I wasn't struggling, but I wasn't done with where I was. I wasn't satisfied with where I was. And when I got into HAA, uh, I feel like my shop, it, it grew, it almost doubled, I think. Um, Maybe it did double. I'd have to look at my numbers, but um, I definitely hit that next level that I wanted to get to. So I definitely feel like it changed um, where I was, which I was happy with, but not done. I wanted to keep going. And this was, that was, when did you actually get to quit your day job? And guys, we'll be talking a little bit more about, you know, how she was able to do that here in a minute. But when, when did you actually get to quit? Uh, the end of October, beginning of November. That's awesome. And the perfect time, the yeah. perfect time to be able to quit, right? Yeah. And I needed to not have anything else that I had to do that month because I was very busy. We understand. <laughs> in yes. 
We, Holidays are nuts. We completely yeah. understand. So I'm sure everybody's ready to hear these secrets. So guys, let us know in the chat. Do you want to hear exactly how Andrea was able to quit her job by using secrets from her competition? Let us know in the chat. And in the meantime, um, Andrea Stephanie would like to know if you are also one of Renee Christine's Handmade Titan University students. I am. Are you? So you're like, you're like a course addict. A little bit. <laughs> it might be a problem. Don't tell my husband. Uh, <laughs> well, have they paid themselves off is what matters. They have. And that's why I have no, I had, there was no question in my mind that it was a no brainer for me because I'm like, well, I, well, when I bought Renee's course, I had been following her for a few months ahead of that. And I used what I learned from her to get to the point where I was at. And I was like, well, I know I'm going to be able to pay it off. So I did that immediately. And then when you brought out Handmade Alpha Academy, I knew instantly, I'm like, well, I trust her. I know what I'm going to get out of this course is going to pay itself off. And it did pretty much the next month. Like it was, it was fast. <laughs> That's awesome. For me. <laughs> Yeah, for, for we we can't like throw out like you guys will make your money back in one month, guaranteed. Right, like, right. <laughs> you, they could buy it and then just not do anything, never yeah. even log in. And it's then still like it it definitely helps, but it's still a hundred percent up to you to do the work. Yeah, you still have to work. It's not it's not like you push a button. If you want that, you can go <laughs> like find some get rich quick infomercial or something. But guys, right. And I don't want to make it sound like that because it's a lot it is work. It is. <laughs> it's fun work though. <laughs> and if you're if you're a course addict like me, um, you will do that work. <laughs> and that was the that was the cool thing was I was that course addict. I took all of Renee's courses. Oh, yeah. I took um, I took a charisma course. Yep. I took um, David Seitman Garland's course building course. I took so many courses before I also ever decided to also make a course. And I was totally pressured into doing it by Renee and the Alphas. Like I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't even volunteer for it. Everyone bugged me so much that I ended up doing it. And then I'm like, well, I guess this is my life now. So it was crazy. <laughs> um, so Andrea, are you going to make a course too? I I signed up for David Seitman Garland's course as well. Yeah, so maybe someday, but you I should don't know. Sewing, like a really, you could do something that ties to your brand. That would be really cool. I, I do know a little bit about sewing. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope. So. Well, everyone is. Uh, there's like a million yeses that they want to hear your secret. So let's talk about it. How did you get to quit your day job? Tell them all of the amazing things that you did with your competition and the awesome tool that you used that we also are in love with. And I'm sure that a certain Mr. Wolf will be really excited that you um, <laughs> that you found so much benefit from it. <laughs> yes. Um, I used the E-Rank Pro membership and um, I spent a little bit of time in the competition tool. Um, and my big secret is that if you kind of keep an eye on your competition and you see something that's maybe a huge spike in sales for them or some kind of anomaly, follow that trail and find out why. And that's what I would do. I, I saw one of my, it's a bigger shop. They're much bigger than I am. and. Like I how many sales? List. Do you have a, a rough like guesstimate? Do you have a rough guess on how many sales they had, like compared to where you were when you were first studying them? Probably they've probably had about six or seven thousand sales since Wow. Since I started tracking them or started following them when I first started my business. Because I was still watching back then. I would get on Etsy before I had E rank and I'd see, well, where are they at? Oh my gosh, how many sales they had, you know. 50 sales that day or 30 sales that day. So I, I would keep track that way, but here's a, here's a question. A lot of people do that and they almost take like, take it the wrong way. They sit and they stalk their competitor, but rather than thinking, how can I use this? It discourages them. They're like, Oh, they have more sales than me. Boo hoo. Woe is me. Um, did you ever go through that? Even like when you first started out, was there ever a point where you really got bummed? Cause I know I did with my competitor before I ran them out of business. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I definitely felt like that um, a lot because 
if you spend too much time looking at how great everyone is doing and not enough time celebrating the fact that you're step by step building what you want, they started one foot in front of the other too. They started with zero sales too. And if, if you can remember that even when you're looking at your competition and they're doing great and you want to do that great, if you can just kind of remove yourself from it and look at it with an eye where you're kind of thinking that's where I could be. If I can do what they can do or do what they do better, I can be there too. That's what keeps you going because it's, it is very easy to get jealous and down. Um, and you, you know what, go ahead and feel like that for like five minutes, but then close it up and, um, use that as motivation to work in your own shop. Yeah. Cause you know what would be even scarier is if you looked at this shop, like this big competitive shop and you notice that they're not making any sales at all, it kind of tells you that there's no demand for what you're trying to sell anyway. So if you see that someone has a lot of sales, that's great. That's a good indication that there's demand for your product. So all you have to do is whatever they are, wherever they are, whatever their bar is, you need to get yourself either right beside them or above it. And I believe that that's kind of the exact way that I explain it in HAA is you want to position yourself either beside or above your competition, right? Right. And do you feel like you've done that with, with your shop in terms of your branding and your photos and how it looks aesthetically? Yes. And you know, I didn't start there either. You know, you see someone who has this great photo and you think, Oh, that's a really great photo. How can I improve my own photos? And you do. And, you, you know, and then you get to the point where like you've improved them as best as you could. And then, you know, you kind of, you kind of coast for a while, you do the best you can. And then you see another picture and you're like, Oh, well, that's kind of cool too. Maybe I should check my photos again and see if I need to improve them again. And it's a constant state of just trying to better yourself. Even if you, you don't want to be, you don't want to copy anyone. Um, but it's good to have it as motivation to do it your way. Perfect. And hey, what was that? I want. I would love to hear more about that that BOGO sale that you were um, mentioning over email. Could you maybe like tell the full story about that so the alphas can, you know, learn a little bit about that really super duper cool strategy that you discovered? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, so the BOGO sale. I didn't know that my competitor was having it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't following their social media or anything. That's and I um, wouldn't get one guys for anybody who isn't familiar with that term. They're like, what's a BOGO? <laughs> um, so every couple of days I pop on to E-Rank and I check my competitors and see, oh, how were their sales this week? And I noticed one day my, my competitor had maybe quadruple the number of daily sales that they typically have. And my jaw hit the floor. I was like, what are they doing? I have to find out. Like, I have to know. So I stalked their social media. I went on their Etsy page. I looked for, are they having a sale? Did they have some huge sale? Nothing on their Etsy page. I hop on Instagram um, and they had listed a BOGO lovey sale, buy one, get one. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, I don't know if I can do that because that's giving away a product. Ugh, I don't know. Am I priced right? Let me check. And I crunch my numbers. Anyways, it turned out it would be okay to do for me. Um, another thing I noticed um, about what they were selling, it wasn't just lovies that they were selling. Their audience was excited about the lovey sale, um, but they weren't just buying lovies. They were buying sheets and all the other stuff that they had in their site, whether or not it was um, it was only if you get a lovey that you get a free lovey, but they were buying a lot of other stuff too. So and it was really intriguing to me. What's a sorry, Mr. Moore has to run upstairs. Real quick. <laughs> and what, for all the alphas who aren't in your industry, because I I didn't know until yesterday until you explained it to me. But do you want to tell them what a lovey is? Yes, a lovey is a small security cuddle blanket. It's meant to be tiny and not drag on the floor. It's just a little cuddle thing for a kid, and it's not very expensive to make, not a very huge cost investment. Right. Perfect. So, um, so you did, did you, you did try to do the, the buy one, get one? Yes, I did. I did the sale. I, I lined it up with black Friday 
because I was like, what am I going to do for Black Friday? So that's what I did for Black Friday sale. Um, and then I followed your recommendations for how to stage your emails and everything for Black Friday. Did I you did double, that? Did you do it? Have you done any double dips or anything like that? I didn't do a double dip. That's oh. the only thing I didn't do <laughs> because I figure if they're getting a the BOGO was my version of the double dip because right. you're going to get it. Obviously worked. So how how did you yeah. what were your sales like for Black Friday? Um, they were about three or four times three and a half times uh, what my typical average daily rate was, which for me was amazing because it followed through the next few days. So I had quite a few days where I, I had, I made in those three days what I would make for the whole month. That's amazing. And that's, that's to be expected guys. So for everybody who's freaking out right now, because I'm, I'm seeing it everywhere and all of the groups, I'm seeing it in Anthony Wolf's uh, group. Um, for those who don't know, Nate, our, our employee is also an employee of Anthony. So we're constantly, you know, in cahoots and apparently it's just everywhere. Everyone's freaking out about no one's making sales right now, but for all of us, like senior Etsyans who have been on the platform for a long time, guys, this is no so normal. Everyone's outside. Everybody's enjoying the warm weather. Um, and it's not going to pick back up until like around August, September. So please, if, if you guys are um, freaking out that you're not making sales right now, I call this like build time. This is the time when I learn. I spend all of my time reading. I buy courses. I take trainings. I do everything that I can to you know, soak in as much information as I can before the holidays kick in. So right now is a great time to begin like expanding your knowledge and getting ready for the holiday season. Have you, Andrea, have you noticed a drop in sales um, for summer? Is that, is it like that in your industry? Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, and then you can also see with that com com uh, competition tool on E-Rank, um, you see your competitors having a little bit less sales too. So that always kind of gives me that like reassurance, like, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> and Nicholas, who's also a Handmade Alpha Academy student, um, Nicholas asks, how does one find their co uh, competitors on E-Rank? And that is with the E-Rank Pro membership only, I, I do believe. But there, you have a competition report and competition tracker where you can see exactly how many sales your competitors are making each day. So, And that's what you use, correct, Andrea? Yes, that's what I use. Perfect. All right, guys. Um, Andrea, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the alphas before we dive into some some questions? Because if not, alphas, start flooding the, the chat with questions. I think that's pretty much. I think that was pretty much it. <laughs> what's it like? What's it like finally? You know, being able to work from home full time. What's What's that like? I love it, but I also have realized that I have to make time to get out of the house. And go oh. do things or I'm gonna go crazy <laughs> and I'm not complaining <laughs> oh yeah two days I say two days a week um, especially when you work from home because otherwise it's almost like you get too comfortable at home with he and I both you know working from home now it, it's like if I don't get out at least twice a week and just you know detox from social media I keep telling Nate now that we've hired him I'm like Nate Saturdays I don't work you can message me <laughs> if there's an emergency. I'll I'll jump on I'll jump on. But Saturdays, like I am a better person if I don't work on Saturdays. So, all right, we have a lot of questions. Andrea, are you ready? I don't know. Let me get a sip of water. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. Water water is absolutely allowed. Good. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Let me try to see. I know that we missed a couple. <laughs> Amber Marie, is that a vacuum on your wall? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, great. <laughs> my fabrics are so fuzzy. I, my mom actually gave me this great tip to use my actual vacuum at first, and you know, like you pull the thing up, and you're just trying to like vacuum stuff off the table, and that got old. So I got my little wall vacuum now. I love it. <laughs> great, I love it. Um, Stephanie wants to know if you've hired uh, like an admin or any other employees to help you. I haven't. Um, my mom has come to help me crank products out, uh, because there were times I definitely needed that help, but I don't have anybody else helping me, uh, with the other stuff yet. 
that's, but have you ever, do you, do you think about it for like, you know, the future of or how, like, is it something that you feel is in the stars for you eventually, or do you really like just kind of being independent? I like the independence, but you know, it takes up so much of your time. I'd love to be able to have someone do um, social media or even like cutting fabric for me, you know, somebody who to just take some of the stuff that I feel like I could trust someone else doing. But you know, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I think we're all kind of like, well, this is mine. This Control is how free. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to let that go. <laughs> it's even like that when we we just hired Nate and I'm I'm finding myself just micromanaging too much. And he's complete. I'm completely confident in his abilities. He's, you know, he's fantastic. But, you know, he edits like my videos and we're doing some HAA updates and I'm like, okay, now they need to be like this. They need to be just like this. So I, I see myself doing it. It's great though, you know, and in time, what what I found is that when it's time to hire someone, you know, you've got the money to do it. And it's, it's almost like there's two different situations. You can either be, um, you can either be money poor and time rich or time poor and money rich. And you, you hit that point where you're time poor and money rich, where you can invest money, you know, to pay someone else. That way you can have more time for yourself because ultimately that's what we got into business for in the beginning, right? Like we, we right. all want more time and that's often not the case, especially when you quit your job and start doing this full time. It's almost like you start obligating yourself to more things. Right. <laughs> it's a slippery slope, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, it's way more fun than working for somebody else. It, yes, it definitely is. I don't have to ask anybody if like, can I have the day my kid's sick or, right. you know, I think I need this doctor's appointment on that day and not, not that other day. You know, it's that freedom is nice. Absolutely. Um, Stephanie wants, let's see, I can't get my mind around if I had a huge surge in sales around Black Friday. How do you keep up? Uh, how do I keep up? You just plug through, I guess. It's, it's hard to keep up. You know, when I, when I felt like I couldn't keep up with the orders, that's when I'm like, mom, um, can you come over and help me sew all these blankets today, please? Um, I don't know. You just do your very best. And when, when I was working, I was working my job and then I'd come home and I'd sew and then I'd work on my days off and then it would be weekends I'd be sewing. And that got me through, but that, that wasn't sustainable. But now, yeah, you just do what you can. You adapt, right? That's what we talk yeah. about. Okay. Plan, adapt, evolve. In time, you'll be able to take more and more work as you kind of, you know, get into that new skin. It takes time. It really does. But over that time, you really, you build a thicker business skin to the point where you can put yourself through a little bit more, you know, than, than maybe you would have when you first started in business. So, um, Julie asks a great question that we answer all the time, but I would like Andrea to answer it um, okay. as, from a student perspective. Andrea, Julie asks, I'm currently going through HTU and I'm considering Handmade Alpha Academy. How does it differ from HTU? Well, HTU is a little bit more about your marketing for your, for your business. Um, and Handmade Alpha Academy will help you succeed with marketing, but also with specifically on Etsy. Um, so I am happy that I got both. Yeah, and that we get that question all the time, guys. So don't don't feel like a you know ashamed of asking it. But Handmade Titan University is a handmade marketing course, and I almost um, I feel like, and what Renee is also you know voiced is that alphas who start with HAA and go into HTU, they almost enter HTU with a lot more confidence because they're really able to like dive in because they've started with that Etsy foundation. However, 
the same kind of goes when when we have these um, students who have started in HTU and then they go over to HAA because by that point they've already got their branding down and they already have an eye for everything that you know they need to do for their actual brand as a whole. But then they're able to really hone in on Etsy itself. So HAA is specifically marketing, and we lean way more on the side of psychology and neuroscience. Um, Andrea, before you joined HAA, did you know anything about marketing psychology, or was that all was that all new to you? I I like could skim the surface of it. Um, I definitely learned a lot more about it in HAA for sure. That's my that's like my favorite topic ever. Yeah. So I, I figured that I'd ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> I, I was gonna uh, Polly. I was gonna avoid this question, but I'll go ahead and answer it. And I'll let, well, I'll let Andrea answer it. Um, oh. Andrea, do you use uh, what's better, E rank or Marmalade? In your opinion, I've used both. Um, I started with Marmalade and I was pretty happy with it. And then I met E-Rank and I loved E-Rank. I don't not like Marmalade. I've used them both for different things, but right now I'm kind of an E-Rank girl. Okay. Nothing we'll leave it. Marmalade. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Like I have, I have no problem with either, but I have gotten a lot out of E-Rank. Perfect. Yeah, Anthony, he's working on some updates too. So, um, Andrea, you're a pro member, right? Yes. Okay, keep keep like eyeballing the E rank group because there's some cool stuff coming that um, I'm not allowed to talk about. But there's oh, cool I stuff. can't wait to hear. <laughs> there's there's cool mystery stuff coming. Um, let's see. How do we use E rank to find the competitors? Do we use keywords? I found my competitors by um, finding them on Etsy. Um, and then typing the shop name into the competitor toolbar in E-Rank. So basically what you would need to do, Nicholas, is almost you have to do your own research on Etsy. Yeah. You've got to go on to Etsy, find, find some people who align with you, which for your shop, Nicholas, um, I would find almost like, because you do more like abstract art, I would find almost like an abstract art or, um, you know, uh, almost like painting themed, uh, print on demand shops who do, you know, primarily artwork on their print on demand products and then find whoever it is who is the highest in that industry and then take those individuals and enter them in on the competition tracker in E rank pro. And from there, you'll be able to start tracking how many sales that they're making. But you do have to do the research portion on their own because there's really no way to send a send, you know, an algorithm in to swoop out and find who your competitors are because I think that's kind of subjective or subjective. Um, Melissa, favorite social media platform and how do you use it beyond just announcing sales? Ooh, I like Instagram a lot. Um, I use it. Sometimes I'll put stories up um, kind of like with TikTok where I take a quick little video and I just put it on my story and people seem to like that. Um, I put a lot of pictures up there. It just it's a good place to go and talk with your audience too you know, comment on their pictures, like, oh, your kid's so cute. Um, some Sometimes if somebody's sick, lots of moms will post, you know, oh, my baby's sick today. And sometimes it's kind of nice to just say, oh, I hope they feel better. You know, like it's, it's a good way to get involved with your community. That's great. Um, so, and one thing that I want to like point out, guys, her Instagram is in the uh, video description. Be sure to go click on that. But Andrea has great photos and that is essential. So where a lot of people say, oh, Instagram isn't working for me. I'm not seeing any results from it. A lot of the times it's because that seller just isn't really investing a lot of time into presenting their products and taking the best possible photos because there really is an art to Instagram. You almost yeah, have to be able to, sure. yeah, you've got to be able to scroll through your Instagram feed and it almost needs to look like one big cohesive picture. And what I, what I find is that, you know, sellers like Andrea and we'll say um, Paula Haas is another great example from Clean and Dirty. They have such a beautiful Instagram feed that everything just plays together really nicely. And that's why there's a lot of engagement going on. Andrea, do you have, um, what do you find is your like Instagram strategy? Do you just do like in the moment photos? Do you stage things? Do you kind of bounce between? I used to do a lot of in the moment stuff. And um, if you scroll far enough back, <laughs> you'll see that my pictures, 
um, we're all just like on my phone real quick little, oh, got to get this one. This is cute. You know, got to save it for the gram, right? Um, but I actually was starting to get burned out on that. Um, it was just too much to keep up with, like trying to always remember to stop to take a photo would like slow me down and kill my product productivity during the day. And so I started um, batching my own photos and doing, you know, at the end of the day when everything was done, doing the best I could with those. But I also, when I started getting just overwhelmed with not enough time of, not enough of me to go around to get everything done, I actually um, did hire a professional photographer for like a couple of lifestyle type product photos because I have tried so many different things to get the, the pictures to just be where I want them to be and I couldn't do it and I was taking so much time on some of those things that it was just one place where I could hire it out and not really worry about it as much because I've done you know the best I could with the editing but I feel like my skills of editing um I just I couldn't get the good light and I just I had trouble getting the photos to be what I wanted them to be so um, so I went to this thing where they, you know, my, my photographer took a bunch of pictures, like lifestyle type stuff. And then I can use the later app to stage when I'm going to post them. And you schedule, and you use a scheduler for your post that must make it way, yeah. may way easier. Yeah. I mean, if you try to take a quick picture and then quickly post it on Instagram and think of something witty to say, and it's like, uh, I'll sit here for five minutes trying to figure out what I want to write. And that's five minutes that could have been responding to emails or sewing or getting stuff done in your business. So, and you said you use later. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead alphas and I'm going to post the, the link to later. Um, there you go. That way you guys can check it out that I've heard later is a great one. I've heard Hootsuite's a great one. Um, I believe that later is what Paula Haas recommends too. And Man, I bet they had to pay a fortune for that for later, for later.com. Later <laughs> that yeah. was probably a multi thousand dollar deal. Yeah. It was probably very expensive. Um, let's see. Do you design your fabrics yourself? That's an interesting question. Some of them, um, have designed them. I would use, um, pre-made graphic sets and, you know, arrange them on Photoshop and you can have your own fabric printed or um, there's, there are, you can still, you can do that for print on demand stuff too, but I'm, I haven't done that quite yet. But I, yeah, I, I'd I wish I were a little bit more artistic where I could actually paint my own designs. This it hasn't gone well. <laughs> well, I think that, I think that what you've got going is, it's amazing. It's unique. And I think that as a parent myself seeing it, it, it just feels very warm. Like your whole shop almost has its own atmosphere where it's very minimalistic. You know, your branding is very minimalistic, but it's very classy. And that's, you know, that makes me feel safe. Like as a shopper, especially when you're buying something for, for your child. So I think that you're, you are spot on. Um, let's see, do you use inventory software for fabric or use any, or, uh, wait, do you use inventory software for fabric use or any tips on managing inventory? Um, I've no, I don't use any kind of software for it. I kind of order by demand. There's a couple of fabrics that people always want. So I always have that on hand, but I just kind of like look at my shelf and I know what I have. And if I need to order more, I just order more. And then I, you know, I track it on my, um, like QuickBooks. I make sure I keep that up, but no, I'm not, I don't have like a, a set. Okay. Fabric a there's 10 yards, fabric B there's two yards. I don't, I don't put the time into that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, everyone thinks that because I make so many products, you know, with all my, my keys that I've got some crazy inventory system and, no, yeah. I, I don't. And that's why I don't ever cover. Yeah. I've never done a video on uh, everyone's like, oh, I want to know about your inventory tracking software and yada, yada. I'm like, no, I, I use it. 
I just eyeball it. I can just tell. Here's the thing. You can, yeah, like, oh, how many of these keys do we have? I don't know. Count them. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's look, that easy most look, of the time. Look at my quantity on Etsy. So. I mean, if you have bigger <laughs> items, then, I mean, we have keys. We can fit almost our entire inventory into one chest of yeah, we, stuff. we have a chest. If you have an inventory where you have to fill your garage with racks and racks full of stuff, then it makes more sense. But for us, it just, it's not, it would be a waste of money, honestly. Do you, uh, <clears throat> how do you store your products, Andrea? You're not, you're not um, made to order, are you? Most of it is. Um, oh, okay. I do keep some that are like ready to ship without kind of personal personalizing them, but Basically, a lot of the people that purchase from me want their name or the baby's name on the blanket. And I do the embroidery here. And so it's kind of like um, if, if it needs a personalization, I got to make it from scratch. So we had we have a question from um, Melissa D. And this is kind of a scary one. Did you hear um, earlier this month about the the child who was killed um i think I, I think it was a boy i think it was a little boy who suffocated from an amber necklace since you make products for babies like does that does that stir you does that like scare you when you when uh, you hear stories like that it makes me sad um yeah yeah it does make me a little nervous so i put little inserts in with the how to use this with my products because you can't assume that everybody knows safe sleep practices um even though you know i know it's you know doctors push that on new parents all the time um and it changes so frequently like what my what my mom was told and what i was told drastically and even, different, and even right? my friends who are having yeah. babies now it's it's different well, from what i was told well that's like when we were initially raising taylor we would get some tips from our parents that we were like absolutely not we're not going to do that mm -hmm. that's awful yeah. you look in parenting books for recent days and the things that your parents tell you are just wrong exactly. just don't yeah. do that so what's what's the current do you do you know the current like um what's your basically what does your slip say that you include in your packaging like what is the current safe sleep practices with a blanket for all of our parents out there who may not know? <laughs> what do you recommend um <laughs> babies should i think it's under one I'll have to double check that, but infants, newborns, babies under one should not be sleeping with a blanket ever. They shouldn't be sleeping in a swaddle um, without you watching them. Like a parent should be monitoring their child if they're in a swaddle blanket, if they're in a swing, if they're teething. Like I have these little teethers and it's like, first you have to, you have to inspect that toy before you give it to your child. Make sure that nothing is broken on it. And then you have to sit there with them when they're playing with it. You can't put them in a crib and let them play with a toy or in a swaddle or a swaddle sack uh, without watching them. This so, is, so a baby, what happened with it? Was it a necklace? It was, you know, the amber, the amber necklaces that. Yeah, but why was it on a baby? That they're for they're for teething pain, right, Andrea? Teething pain. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know if they are supposed to teeth on them or if they're no, supposed it's, to you're, it's supposed to be close. To the, it's supposed to be close to the neck where they can't. Okay. But I think that the that already sounds like an awful idea. Yeah, like putting yeah. a necklace on a baby is you're not supposed to do that. You're period. supposed to. So when you use them, you're supposed to only let them wear them like under your supervision. They're never supposed to sleep in them. Um, and apparently this, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to get anything out of Etsy for that. Though. That think seems like a bit of common they, sense. They're trying to sue Etsy and Etsy. It's like that. Was, Etsy, they're the seller is on Etsy. Etsy is a hundred percent. That's profitable. like you bought something that hurt your kid at a yard sale. So you sell the, you try to sue the city. No, it's not. It doesn't. That's like an employee. Yeah. That's like an employee did something wrong. The company is responsible. Etsy it's, is technically responsible, but they're not. You, you put a necklace on a baby and it suffocated because you left it alone. That is a hundred percent your fault. Yeah. It's not Etsy's fault. I, I, this, it's sad, but the whole thing is sorry. just, we'll, is, we'll move on. Let's get back to happy. <laughs> let's get back to happy. And he's like, yes, get back to happy. <laughs> do, uh, Rosabella, do you have multiple machines? Uh, yes, I have, um, my sewing machine right next to me, my baby. <laughs> Um, I have a serger and then I have a um, embroidery machine that can embroider, but it can also be a sewing machine. 
because if my, my very favorite sewing machine has a problem, I have a backup, which is so nice. And I, I assume that, um, I assume that you've, have you used the same one like all this time or have you, have you needed to like upgrade like equipment? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was lucky that I got a heck of a deal on this. Uh, when I started my first shop, this is my little designer SE here, um, uh, Husqvarna, and it it can embroider too. I don't use it for embroidery. It's my just my strictly my showing, sewing machine, and it's it's my favorite. And I don't want to. I my brother machine is probably a better sewing machine, it, but I I like this one. Like this is like my like my best friend, you know, like I'm not ready to <laughs> upgrade. You don't want to break up yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I, get, I get the feeling that we have a lot of sewing alphas in the comments because we're getting a lot of questions about yeah. the, the fabric and the sewing machine. Like everybody wants to know. Um, oh, oh here's, a, here's a good one. And this is the last question that we, that we actually have. So I want to actually put out some feelers to the alphas. Um, we keep having alphas who are asking us, if we're gonna do a Q&A for Handmade Alpha Academy specifically. But if you guys have any questions about HAA specifically for Andrea or for you know any of the other students that we do over the next three to four weeks for the HAA opening, you guys are free to also ask them here. And I'm not gonna like, I want Andrea to answer honestly. Like Andrea, if something sucked and someone asks you if it sucked, tell them it sucked because I, I <laughs> you know, I want you to be honest. I'm not like, ooh, Andrea, here's a 20 under the table if you say <laughs> nice things about me. Like, you know, that's, I think that you kind of know that that's not how we roll here. So, right. yeah. um, but in the meantime, do you use promoted listings on Etsy? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. So how, how do you feel about promoted listings? How do you feel? Do they help at all? Do you monitor them closely? What's your strategy for them? Uh, my, my strategy has changed over time. Um, in the beginning, I had everything, you know, advertising. And then I realized I was losing a lot of my money on yeah. things that weren't selling that people were just curious about. What is that? Um, so I uh, stopped doing that and I started just focusing on my best sellers and allowing the same amount that would have been spread apart the whole shop onto my four or five best sellers. And that seems to help a lot. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't realize that they put all of their products, you know, they try to promote everything when in reality, you're spending a lot of money on products that maybe people just don't want. So really look at your sales, look at the products that are already doing well. And those are the products you want to promote because those are going to pull people into your shop and maybe they won't even buy that bestseller. Maybe they'll buy one of those, those products that, you know, aren't doing as well. But usually when someone's shopping on Etsy, they, you know, they see the one product that draws them in and then they look at your whole shop and then they decide to either buy the original product that caught their attention or they decide to buy something else. But regardless, they're in your shop and they have, you know, they've discovered you and promoted listings are a great way to do that. So Amber, um, Marie, Amber Marie asked, what are your goals now that you've finished HAA? Of course, Amber Marie, she's a HAA <laughs> student already. So she's our <laughs> she's alpha. A smarty pants. She's our alpha of the year, guys. She won a... Um, she won an $800 DSLR camera from us and an alpha of the year trophy <laughs> for her office. And um, I threw in a couple of other camera related accessories in the bag. Oh, did you? Tour, yeah. I didn't know that. Bag and a tripod. And but <laughs> Amber's being a smarty pants and she wants to know what uh, your goals are now that you've finished HAA. What's where your like you next year? Next... In five years. <laughs> where do you see yourself, Andrea? Well, my goal would be. Um, are we talking like big goals, like, or just like early all goals? Both, why not? All of them. Tell us all the goals. <laughs> well, I'd love to have a bigger workshop area and maybe even have to like rent a space. I don't really want to pay to rent a space, but I'd like to be so big that I had to rent a space and I would love to hire someone. I'd love to get to that point where I would feel comfortable hiring someone to help me with some of the ins and out of the business, or maybe even a VA, that would be nice too, but someday. Oh, so expansion then. Yeah. 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 I want to get, I want to grow. 
That's great. That's and you good. know, that's a good goal to have leading, leading a little team is a lot of fun. I've, I'm finally to that point where I feel like I'm leading a little team and I'm helping with some of the development over at E-Rank. So it's, it's fun to have like a group of people that are like-minded that are really, you know, invested mm -hmm. in the same purpose. And it's, it's great. It's, it, I don't think that I have ever been happier with my business than when I'm, you know, surrounded by people who also are just as passionate about my business. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. Yeah. Stephanie said, get you a she shed. A she shed. You a she shed? A she shed. <laughs> idea if you've got if you have any land or anything that you could build a nice big like one of those outdoor metal sheds, get it insulated and run a business out of yeah. that. That's a lot of people do. That would be, um, that'd be that'd be like the best of both worlds. Yeah, because like, you're all everybody out. <laughs> That's great. Um, let's see. Shay said, what part of HAA would you say was the most helpful to you? Honestly, the uh, psychology, the the um, marketing psychology, because it helps, it helps you, it kind of puts you in the perspective of a buyer's reaction to your product and your brand versus this is my brand, this is my brand, this is my product, buy my stuff. It's okay, well, figure out what's in their head and how to um, inspire them to purchase your products. <laughs> Did you, um, so in terms, and this was a part that always worried me because I was always afraid that I think that like brain activity is really interesting, but I was worried that it would be boring for you know, people who are just like, ah, just tell me what to do. I don't care about brains. But <laughs> <laughs> so was it interesting to you to actually learn about those neural pathways and how things are actually happening in the human brain, like, and how the brain of those shoppers is responding to like, you know, the different things that you do within your shop? Yes, because I always want to know why. Okay, oh, so <laughs> people are buying this, why? People like my shop. Why do they like my shop? Because I want to do more of that. <laughs> So exactly. knowing the background. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's like my, my favorite thing in the world. I love reading and I'll read books that have nothing to do with marketing. They're just purely psychology and neuroscience, but then, you know, I'm able to connect. I'm like, okay, this happens, you know, okay. Th this person gets a dopamine rush when they do this. Well, buying also buying something online also causes a dopamine rush. So how can I trigger this with this in my storefront? Oh, I could do this. So then that's kind of what HAA is, is it's just a combination of all of my crazy, um, you know, where I take the the strings and I'm sitting there with my cork board and I'm, you know, connecting all the <laughs> strings together and I've got all these pins everywhere and photos and it looks like a mad scientist laboratory. And that's basically what HAA is. It is a product of my insanity. And apparently it's working because we've got a lot of very healthy, happy, happy alphas in there. Um, that's the fun stuff. The fun stuff. Um, shop cool gifts. Do you plan on having your own website? I like supporting small business that uh, that way after finding them on Etsy and buying from their website instead. Andrea, are you an ultimate architect? I am. Uh, I'm not done with it yet, though. <laughs> okay. So do you um, have a website yet or are you still working I'm, on it? I'm working on it. I have a, I think I have my coming soon page up and that's, it's not, it's going to be a while before it's done, but it definitely is in the works. Okay. Um, and what, what is your, because I, we, here's the thing we've got handmade alpha Academy opening in June. Um, but Renee Christine also has architect open right now. And I'm kind of, I'm, it, I'm stuck in that position where like, I really want the alphas to take architect if they feel that they're at that level. But then, you know, I also, we have HAA opening soon too. So from your perspective, when is the right time for someone to take architect versus HAA? And do you think that current HAA students should consider taking architect just from a student like perspective? Um, I, I think they should because you don't always want all of your eggs just in one basket. You know, Etsy, Etsy is great and it's a great place to, to have your shop and to stay, but it's always good to have two avenues. You know, it's like you have two eyes, you know, what if something happens to your shop on Etsy? What if someone makes something up about you and, you know, closes your shop, what are you going to do? Um, so having that background knowledge of, having your own space, your own real estate on the internet is kind of, it's a good safe um, option. It's good to do both. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with having both. 
yeah. I don't plan on leaving Etsy, but I want to have my own website too. I want everything. <laughs> no, no, all the things. Guys, I want to have all the things. I put the link to uh, Renee Christine's um, Ultimate Architect. It's only open for a few more days, but I did put that down in the description or in the uh, in the chat if you guys are interested in checking it out. But that that course is to build your own website. One thing that I will say for architect is that there is a little bit of um, you do have to you know have a couple upfront costs, and I think that yeah. that's something that. It's, you have to. You have to have the money for your domain and your hosting and things like that. Any plugins and. Well, she includes what I think it's like three hundred to five hundred dollars worth of free plugins. Oh, okay. Something like it's that. a lot. Yeah. She takes care of a lot of that for you. Yeah, she she does a lot of the you know the busy work for you. Um, but I went ahead and plugged that down. Um, because there's only a few more days that that's going to be open. And if you, or if you buy with that link, she has created this really cool, um, like partnership with the alphas, or you also get some bonuses from me, um, including couples business boot camp. You get a progress check with me and, um, there was one more, oh, a hundred Instagram photo prompts from me. So those are goodies that you'll get if you enroll with that link. Um, let's see, lots of people talking about psychologies. Uh, Melissa, do you have any special allergy precautions for your work area, uh, like keeping pets out, using a special vacuum, et cetera, because you make baby items? Um, do the best to keep the pets out, obviously. Um, and I vacuum, you know, I keep all of, it's very fuzzy fabric, so you wanna just keep it as, keep the fuzz down as much. And then also um, always tell them to wash their fabric or their, their items before they give them to their baby. I mean, if if I buy something for my baby, I'm gonna wash it first no matter what, even if it came from the most pristine workshop ever, you don't know if like something happens in transit. I mean, it's gonna be in a mailer or a box and yeah, it's always just wash it ahead of time. And you don't know whose hands were on it, you yeah. know, before yeah. they packaged it. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, do you send a mailing list out too? So I assume like, do you have an email list is what they're asking? Yes, I have an email list. Um, okay. And what kind of emails, what kind of emails do you send? It's been a while since I've sent one. Um, most of them are, um, the discount. I have a discount on, you'll probably, if you look at any of my listings, you can see there's a prompt for 20% off on there. Um, I typically, you know, I keep it mostly about when I'm running a promotion, if I'm going to be launching a new product line, that kind of stuff, kind of keep them in the loop. But I think I have, like, I have all these ideas in my head. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. I'd like to send more stuff out about um, the baby's first year, you know, some kind of series where kids, you know, not, not a what to expect series, but, you know, just the basics about things my audience would be interested in. I know people here probably aren't as interested in what happens, you know, when this, when they teeth this tooth or blah, blah, blah. But you know what I mean? Something that's going to be. Audience will. Yeah, they'll, they'll understand it and they'll, they'll, under, they'll, they'll, they'll be interested in it. Yeah. And that would be helpful. Yeah. So you're not just, it's not sell, sell, sell. It's yeah. here's a bunch of useful information that you guys can enjoy. And if you also want to buy a product from me, here's a coupon code. So that's, that's great. And you're not just pushing, you know, only that, you know, you're a business, you're pushing that you care about their baby. So that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Melissa, do you poll your customers or social media follow followers on new design ideas? Or do you mainly go by your sales results? How do you think of new product lines, Andrea? Well, I before I make any decisions about what I'm going to make, I look at what's working in my competitor shops and get an idea for what the market wants. And then I take um, my favorites and I'll pull mostly on social media would be where I would probably go for that. Um, do you like the blue or the pink or do you like the green or this? sometimes putting them side by side or running a story. Perfect. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. Anna and Rachel, Starla, did you ever get a chance? Swipe files maybe? Did you ever get a chance to email the Convo trick sheet? I can't think of the name, the, the swipe files. We're, we are gonna be releasing the, re-releasing the swipe file series 
after HAA launches because MailChimp just had a huge update. Uh, Anthony Wolf just rebranded E Rank. So we have to redo module seven of HAA. <laughs> we have to redo a lot of MailChimp information. So we're, we've had a lot of other videos that we need to get updated. That's the cool thing about HAA is all of those updates are included and free for life, but they do take us a lot of time. But after that, we're getting back to work on the swipe file series. So those are not done yet. But now that we've got Nate, the process is going to be a lot faster. So, um, all right. Well, we are at about 1255. So Andrea, First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Can you talk a little bit about where they can follow you? And for those who are wondering, all of those links are also down below. But uh, Andrea, talk about your social media platforms a little bit. Okay, well, I'm on uh, Facebook. I have a group on Facebook. It's small right now. I'm trying to grow it. So if you guys wanted to join that, if you are interested in baby stuff, feel free to hop on over. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Emmy Bell Studio. And if you like 15 second long videos, uh, you can find me on TikTok and I'm at Emmy Bell on TikTok. And I think that that's something that you guys should, you know, really pay attention to is the fact that Andrea is on TikTok, which is primarily, you know, an app for, for younger people and for, you know, kids who are making these music videos and things like that. But TikTok is becoming the new Vine. And Vine was very, very popular for a long yeah. time. So though there's not a lot of business activity taking place on TikTok, I call this pioneering a new landscape. Because if it blows up, guess who's going to be one of the very first brands who was on there kicking butt and gaining a following? It's going to be people like Andrea who took this, this platform that most businesses aren't using and really pioneered it and yep. you know started gaining that following early. And, so. worse, and worse comes to worse, nothing happens at all I yeah mean, that's, that's the worst that could happen <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> the <worst, the> <laughs> funny videos of us making fools of ourselves it's great <laughs> can, you, can you save those videos and like upload them you know like on facebook if you wanted to yeah yep and i think i did that i it might even have the tiktok logo on it i tried to put one up just to see if it would work and i think it did work that's great. So it's not, it's not even like, you know, it's not wasted effort. You make a cool video, you can make a really neat video on TikTok, and then you can just post it everywhere. So even if you don't have a big audience on TikTok, you can take and and move it. My TikTok account, I only made one so I could use the, the did you see the cat filter where you could like use the filter on your cat? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> all like mustache, I think. What was it? one with like a little like uh pet mustache on there or something yeah i did the <laughs> the one i used was uh angry like angry face and <laughs> yes. bubbers is always so angry so i wanted to do the the angry face Shop cool gifts is asking how you spell tiktok it i think that it is i think it's t-i-k-t-o-k -T -T yeah holly McAllister answered that and you guys can find her her tiktok um is it is that is it a handle your tiktok yeah. handle? is that yeah. what is that what the cool kids call it? <laughs> I think, don't quote me on that. I, I'm not that cool of a kid anymore. So, <laughs> the handle. Yeah. you guys can find Andrea's TikTok handle in the video description. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you've learned a lot about competition and that you've had an you know opportunity to, to ask any of the questions that you wanted to ask. Uh, be sure to follow Andrea down below. Check out her Etsy shop. If you have a baby, be sure to go check out some of her blankets because I absolutely love her branding and her products are perfect. Um, Andrea, is there anything else that you want to say to the alphas before we sign off? Um, the only thing, um, one thing, if you are going to be researching your competition, just always remember you are the only person you really need to compete with. Don't, compare yourself to others. Don't spend too much time comparing yourself to other people. Right. Compare yourself to mm -hmm. compare yourself to yourself yesterday, you know, compare yourself to past you, but always look forward and just know that those competitors who are doing great, they're literally just the bar. They are a benchmark that you can visually see and actually try to get to their level because without them, there's no guideline to see what the best even looks like. So be very grateful for competitors. And though you should watch them very carefully, know that you can totally exceed them if you work hard enough, if you put in the work, and if you really, really dedicate your time into treating this like a job. So thank you so much, Andrea. I hope that you have a great weekend. Thank um, you. you too. 
don't don't click any buttons after we sign off because you'll still be here with me and Mark for a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. -bye.